Good morning and welcome. This is Dr. Jerry Cuomo. I'm here with a ankylose, dense fly ankylose case. I'm going to start right off with the um, with the uh, uh, X-ray, and this is the pre-op X-ray. So it shows you where which teeth were removed. We have uh, tooth numbers um, uh, 13 and 14 were removed, and then uh, the canine number 11 was was uh, kept as part of the bridge so that the periodontist sectioned here, removed this segment, and we placed two implants and deficient, uh, had to be grafted bone, which was deficient at first. Um, this um, it represents a trace over that x-ray and then superimposed on top of the implants where they were actually placed. Um, so that, that kind of gives you an idea of where we are today and uh, of course the abutments will reflect uh, exactly the, where the retainers will be in, and we have a ponic space. If you notice with this type of implant, we're subcrustal quite a lot, uh, and that's good because um, the narrow neck of the implant is the key, and everything is narrow. The tissue um, seals supposedly a little bit nicer, a little better, and so for screw retain today, and we're going to walk you through the steps. So there'll be a sequel to this video. Uh, it'll be the lab portion which will follow up with this. Let's go directly now in the mouth and um, again if you have any questions just feel free to contact me about treatment planning etc. So here we are directly in the mouth. And there are abutments so we're going to go ahead and, and our healing abutments or gingival formers as they call it. We'll loosen. Let's get the, uh, it's always a little bit of food particles that have to be removed, so we'll do that first. Okay, there it's quick, just a little bit of air for that. Find the screw. That's it, and just, I'll just start backing these out by hand. And, uh, with the driver and then just by hand you can just untwist that In this case uh, we have gold anodized abutments uh, and I'm going to be showing also the lab portion which uh, is very interesting we're going to film that so that uh, those who are interested can um, can copy that idea. I don't like to have everything assembled from the lab. I'd rather do the assembly work myself and that gives me total control. Uh, if the lab does it and then you got to add a contact, guess what? They have to try to get that cement out of the abutment and the uh, crown portion or retainer and you end up with oxidizing the metal and you have problems even with surface oxidation on the screw plus the screws are laser welded so you don't want to reheat things so that's why we do them in segments it takes a little longer but uh, you get a better much better result so okay so first thing I'm going to do is clean out right. each of these uh, areas with a little chlorhexidine glucane cavity cleanser and then we're going to just rinse those areas and then back in them out so this is all routine see every time there's epithelial tissue and look how well that adapts that tissue it's such a narrowness to it so those implants are subcrustal that means they're below the height of the bone alveolar bone let me just get that in focus you can see the one in the back all right so there they are now we're trying our abutments in order to do that 
we use a special jig that was made but before I even do that I'm going to show you what I did with one of the uh, implants when we go to cement these in to the bridge itself and we do it by hand we line everything up on the model and uh, just to make sure that things line up uh, both on the model and the mount so this is our block out material we use this uh, material from GC uh, it's called uh, NS NDS NDS so it sets very fast quick setting I just inject a little bead in there for this case because there's more of a trough not necessarily a hole I had to reseat this back into the bridge like that so when it goes to when we go to cement that in we'll cement it in and then remove the plug and then the screw will be right down inside so uh, that's how you don't get cement down into the screw hole access hole so you can see that if we didn't have that in there cement is very difficult to remove and, and it'd be impossible all right so that's what we do. we'll do the same thing with the other uh, this one doesn't have the material in it I still have to try this in uh, so if you look straight down here it's got a good seat doesn't rock at all and uh, easy access so we'll squirt that material uh, with the yellow tip all the way down in the middle of that uh, abutment and make sure it seats properly now we had um, the occlusal portion of this tooth we have the in, the incisal edge or the occlusal buckle cusp tip added a little bit all right and then we also had the ponic space tightened up a little bit so we want to uh, add to that I opened up the embrasures a little bit more and we verify occlusion so in the mouth we go this is our try-in jig and this is printed I believe from the lab it's all printed and each of the abutments line up with that here's the anterior abutment and that we just push that down all the way in place and then we have the other one that coincides with that all right so again I had to try this one in here but that should go right into place just like that without any disturbance okay so let's look at this Explorer please Okay, and what we're going to do is just peel this out and observe as we do it this comes out like that and you can see the configuration of that that's the screw head itself so that's going to be subject to change so we'll do a new one of these to make sure and you see it doesn't really slide all the way back in place properly so um, just to show you this will be the throwaway and I will go back in the mouth all right here we go I'm gonna unscrew this and just recheck the threads Threads look good Put that analog away this goes in the jig for the transfer first Put that in place like that that seats all the way and then undo the other analog reseat this all the way pushing it all the way down now they're both ready to go and we also made sure that we had plenty of room for our driver that's important and rechecking that but you want to make sure your driver is bottomed out completely which it is you can see the screws turning on both let's take it and just air them okay so we're going to go in and out of the mouth do all the try in next there we go okay all right I'm just going to verify and recheck I'll use vacuums so microsuction again you can see how that tissue is starting to relax a little bit uh, 
Our tissue wants to migrate on its own. Okay, so, and this goes. Alrighty. There we go. So that lines up perfectly. You push down a little bit. How you doing, Mitch? All right? Okay. So one finger can be holding the flat pat platform. The other one is going to grab the driver. And that driver, just slide that in. Find out. There it is. Just gently tighten that. Don't over tighten. Just a little bit. To seat one. Bring it back. I'm going to seat the other. Open up a hair more, Mitch. Thank you. Okay. Good. And then here. Nice and easy. Don't over tighten. Just enough. I don't want to overdo things. Okay, I'm going to come back to this one and just untighten it a little bit. Go back to the molar. Barely putting pressure on it here. All right. Like that. Like that. Good enough. And the other thing we're going to do is check the soft tissue and just checking for any blanching. Looking underneath, checking the lingual. You can see there's a little bit of tissue irritation on one of the two abutments. That's because we actually pulled the design further back distally. So the healing of the gingival former uh, formed a little area, a natural area, and so when we deviate a little bit from that to make the design right for this for this case, that's what that is. So that's not really tr an irritation caused by uh, neglect of any type. And then we dry that off. Now we got the implants in the right position. Then we're going to try in our, our bridge work. So first thing I want to do is check margins. I'll use an explorer for that. And if it's also tight, I'll be checking with floss. The color's perfect. And we're also checking the ponic as well. So margins are, are perfect. I see that on the lingual. And we're going to check contact. Okay. Looks like we got good contact. Now I'm going to lift up the tissue area and we'll check the blanching there. That looks perfect on the ponic. Perfect embrasures. We got a little bit of blanching going on. That's what we want to see. That's good. And contacts are good. And the last thing we want to do is check occlusion. So very gently, we're going to put the thin paper in. And just very gently, okay? Make sure this is in the middle of our view. Want to lift your chin up a little bit? Yeah, the color's a little different on the, the viewfinder here because uh, we didn't color correct this this image. Uh, but uh, if it shows a little yellow on the image here, don't worry about it. It's not in the mouth. Okay, so just a gentle closure here, please. And just tap, tap, tap. Okay, so we know we made some nice marks on it. We're going to be adjusting those uh, after I'm done. And Mitch, I'm going to just show you what this looks like. We're going to uh, go to the next video. So this is Dr. Jerry Cuomo filming live in my Boca Raton office with the Ankylos Dent Supply case. It looks great. Can't wait to put it in. And I'll walk you through the lab section next. All right, take care. Talk soon.